We are keeping an eye on radar right now where storms have developed to our west. Those storms will likely move towards us and meteorologist Adam Kasky will be here with what you can expect. Plus a look at your full forecast. That's in just a few minutes. But first, seven additional COVID-19 cases have been confirmed here in Bear County, bringing the total number of cases to 2,449. Of these cases, two were confirmed community spread and five from congregate settings. Tonight, 73 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized, 41 of those in the ICU and 21 on ventilators. Here's a look at Bear County's case status of the 2,449 cases that have been confirmed since March 13th. More than 50%, 1,299 people have recovered. 1,081 people are still fighting the virus tonight and the death toll remains at 69. A warning now from federal authorities about a spike in COVID-19 related scams. Our Patty Santos explains struggling businesses and people looking for work might be easy targets. We're going to be looking for you and it's a better choice to uh, discontinue breaking the law. It's not worth it. The San Antonio FBI office and U.S. Secret Service have teamed up with other federal and local investigators to crack down on COVID-19 related schemes nationwide. The current trend that we're seeing is in price gouging with the purchase of protective equipment. Businesses looking to buy personal protection equipment for their staff need to report price inflation to the FBI and use legitimate companies to ensure delivery. I think we're going to see this more in the future now that businesses are starting to open up. She says government agencies and healthcare facilities in our area have already fallen victim. The fraud task force is also looking out for those swindling funds out of the federal small business loan program. These are unscrupulous individuals. They're just trying to get their money on these funds. The Secret Service warns that phishing and ransomware thieves are still up to their old games. The types of crimes haven't really changed much. It's just the their you know, the criminal exploitation of the fear and uncertainty that surrounds the pandemic. Those working from home should stay up to date on their computer upgrades and don't click on just any website or attachment. I think a, an example would be, um, you know, just just people that are starving for information related to the pandemic. Bottom line is be suspicious, be cautious of fake online job applications, which look to steal your personal and bank account information, which in turn could be used to steal your stimulus check. Thank you, Patty. Another potential scam warning tonight after last night's storms. Bear County is warning homeowners who need repair work done to be careful who they hire. The county says there are some red flags to look out for, including putting down money up front and pushy sales tactics. There is no deadline to remove things by or anything like that, especially the morning after. We definitely want folks to take their time and be safe. If they ask for a deposit up front and then say that they're going to come back later to do the work. That's probably a big red flag. To make sure you don't fall victim, file a claim with your insurance company, get some estimates and research a business before you hire them. An update now to a story we first brought you back in February. A few months ago, local students wrote letters of support to people living in San Antonio's sister city, Wuchi, China. Those letters were sent before any COVID-19 cases were confirmed here in Bear County. Now that the virus has spread around the globe, students in Wuchi are responding with a message of their own and thousands of masks. Tiffany Huertas shares that message. We were told that uh, you have a serious epidemic and we really care about you. After hearing the U.S. was greatly impacted by the pandemic, students from Wuxi, China wanted to help. When we heard that you were running out of uh, medical masks, we decided to raise money. The students in China raised enough money to send 4,000 masks for schools in San Antonio that are involved with the nonprofit Summer of Service. The nonprofit works to educate kids through community service learning and travel abroad. Local families also host students from other countries. Due to COVID-19, San Antonio families couldn't host students from Wuxi this year. 15-year-old Han Fang Gu stayed with a local family in 2018. We really appreciate them for their kindness. They treat it as just like if we're family. Han Feng was involved in sending masks to San Antonio. He understands the severity of the situation. Han Feng says back home in Wuxi, China, life was very different a few months ago. It was really serious. We had to stay at home and the government told us not to go anywhere because it would be 
quite dangerous to do so. Han Fang says things are getting better and slowly back to normal. According to Johns Hopkins University in Medicine, there are more than 84,000 coronavirus cases in China. Han Fang hopes people can come together during these difficult times. While mountains and rivers separate us, we enjoy the moonlight under the same sky. So let's unite and accept, expect happiness to come. We really hope that you, you will get better soon. That was our Tiffany Huertas reporting. Great story. Let's turn to tonight's 9 at 9. An effigy of Kentucky's governor hung from a tree during a protest. Scientists are working on a bionic eye that could eventually help humans see in the dark. Plus, a look at how COVID-19 is impacting communities across the globe. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. Brazil is now among the country's hardest hit by COVID-19, and the city of Manaus, located in the middle of the Amazon, has been hit particularly hard. The city has recorded 1,100 deaths and more than 39,000 confirmed cases. On Saturday alone, there were 51 burials. Over the weekend, the Trump administration issued a proclamation banning people who have been to Brazil over the past two weeks from entering the U.S. Someone hung an effigy of Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir outside the governor's mansion Sunday. It happened during a Second Amendment rally outside the mansion, the state capitol. Witnesses say that as the rally was ending, someone drove up in a pickup truck and pulled it out of a bag and hung it on a tree. It included a sign reading, Six Semper Tyrannis, Latin for thus always to tyrants. Another man came up and cut it down, saying it had no place at the rally and that they were trying to be peaceful. The U.S. Air Force is scrapping height requirements for pilots. Previously, pilots had to be no shorter than 5'4 and no taller than 6'5. Now, instead of looking at height as a standard, the Air Force says they'll focus more on scientific methods, which could include everything from weight to the length of someone's arms and legs. Here at home, San Antonio residents stopped by Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery to honor Memorial Day. Like one resident who rode his bike from Kelly Field to the cemetery to honor his father and uncle. Pay respects to all our, our fallen soldiers, men and women, my father, um, my tío. People we spoke to say we should always remember the sacrifices behind this holiday. Muslims around the world are celebrating Eid al fitr but they're having to celebrate in different ways because of the pandemic. In Indonesia, local governments allowed services to take place throughout the country with different measures in place. In the mosque you see here, people were separated more than in past years to help protect against the spread of COVID-19. A 13-year-old has become the youngest graduate of Fullerton College in California. Jack Rico now has four associate's degrees under his belt. He's now headed to the University of Nevada on a full scholarship to get a BS in history. Well, I mean, I'm 13, so I don't want to, like, rush everything, like, I'm still trying to figure it out, but I just want to focus on learning right now because that's what I love to do. Jack started college when he was 11 years old. Researchers in Hong Kong are developing a manufactured eyeball they think could eventually work better than the human eye. It's called the ECI, that stands for electrochemical eye. According to a study, it can recognize just a few letters in the alphabet right now, but the hope is that it could eventually be able to see things from far distances and even see in the dark. Take a look at this. Priests in Northern Ireland have been trying to keep parishioners' spirits up during the pandemic. On Saturday, at the end of a live-streamed mass, they broke out in a jig. One of the priests said he just wanted to give people a laugh during the darkness of coronavirus. The National Weather Service has confirmed all that damage on Palomino Path in Northwest Bear County was in fact the result of an EF1 tornado. People living in the Wild Horse subdivision where that street's located have been picking up the pieces all day. Sounded like you were in a dumpster or trash can with, with debris hitting it all the time and constantly. And, and then you could feel the pressure uh, when the windows blew out. To read more about these stories, head to KSAT.com. Well, and you know, you guys worked so hard yesterday when we were on air talking about, you know, you were warning those people and they did say that in that story that they got into the safe place because they, they knew it was coming. Yeah, that one family was saying they were in the second story, right. moved down to the first story closet yeah. and lo and behold, they're 
roof was mm -hmm. damaged and most of it ripped off. All right, so let's talk about that EF1 tornado confirmed by the local National Weather Service. We're talking about this part of town here, that circle just south of Holotus. And I know there is some lightning and thunder just to your west right now, so we'll get to that in a moment. First of all, so you're looking at 1604 and Braun Road right south of there in the Wild Horse subdivision. Palomino Pass is this street, and this is the only damage from last night that can be attributed to a tornado. This is an EF1 tornado with max winds of about 100 miles per hour. More information we will be getting particularly by tomorrow afternoon and evening of the specifics. All right, let's talk about our overall weather pattern. It's active out there. We have a severe thunderstorm watch box for parts of our area, especially west of San Antonio and the west side of Bear County. But overall, this upper level low is dominating and just throwing more energy and disturbances our way. So this watch box is all the way through 4 a.m. for a good portion of our area, basically San Antonio and westward and south of town as well. So roughly 281 all the way to the Rio Grande. Looking at the radar right now, a few things jump out at us. First of all, you look off into the northwest of town, into the hill country, a lot of activity. Some of this has contained some large hail, but right now, uh, nothing considered severe criteria. Then you get down into Medina County, and this is one that really flared up over the past 20 minutes. And right now, it's not considered severe, but we could have maybe nickel size hail associated with this, uh, basically just north of Hondo and moving toward the Medina Lake area. This will be cruising into western Bear County and affecting the northwestern portion of Bear County soon. It's moving at about 30 miles per hour, so give it about 20, 30, you know, maybe 20 minutes. I mean, it's already creeping into parts of Bear County, but that'll get to the I-10 corridor as well. You notice farther east of town, we don't have any action. It's all originating out west as usual with this kind of situation. And as we go through the night, we're likely to see more of it come together and move through San Antonio. And there is that chance of some severe weather. We're just thinking that the greatest and most significant threat and chance of severe storms will be further southwest of San Antonio, where they have a more unstable and an environment basically in their atmosphere more conducive to the stronger storms. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods, but I think our primary threat around here would be some isolated large hail and especially flash flooding. We had a lot of rainfall yesterday and that rainfall gave us a saturated ground. So more water is like more rain is like pouring water on concrete. So 60 to 70% chance through the 10 midnight hour, even 1 a.m. Then after 2 a.m. we start to see those storm chances really taper off and a few stray showers possible left over through sunrise tomorrow morning. And otherwise it's going to be a fairly quiet day tomorrow. Okay, quickly temperatures right now we're in the 70s, low to mid 70s. What a day. We only made it to 80 for the high temperature, whereas usually we're about 90 degrees. That's at least the average and we're pretty much 70s everywhere and tomorrow start the day at 64, make it to 82, a good amount of cloud cover, especially the first half of the day and then later on in the day some sun. Uneventful on Wednesday, sunshine 90 degrees near 90 on Thursday, a few isolated to widely separated showers and storms come back into the picture by Thursday and especially Friday of next week. But notice no intense heat here. Huh? How's yeah, that? that is one big positive. <laughs> yes. I'm loving that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Adam. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Since this pandemic started, we've learned so much about COVID-19, how it spreads and the best practices for staying safe. But there are still a lot of questions that people are asking. So the Associated Press has rounded up some of the most popular questions and brought them to experts for answers. Here are a few of them. Our first question of the night, what can a COVID-19 antibody test tell me? Well, an antibody test might show if you've had COVID-19 in the recent past. Most experts believe recovering gives people some protection from the virus, but we still don't know how long any immunity might last. 
and issues have been reported with antibody tests. The FDA initially allowed companies to launch antibody tests with minimal oversight, but after reports of faulty tests and fraud, the agency is now requiring companies to prove that their tests work. Here's another popular question. Should runners wear face masks outdoors? The Associated Press says it depends. You don't necessarily need a face covering while jogging or riding a bike, but it's not a bad idea to carry one just in case maintaining social distancing isn't possible. An infectious disease expert at Case Western Reserve University told the AP if you have difficulty breathing with a mask, find their open trails or exercise at a time when you won't be around others. Our last question tonight, how should I clean and store my face mask? An assistant professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Nursing told the AP that coverings should be washed every day after use. It's best to clean your mask in a washing machine or with soap and hot water. Dry in a hot dryer if possible. And as for storage, keep your dry, clean face covering in a paper bag to keep it safe from germs. Turning to tonight's top stories, a South San ISD pilot program created to connect students, parents and staff to free mental health resources has continued to serve the district during the pandemic. The care zone switched gears in the spring after classrooms closed to move services online and set up a hotline for parents. Students participating in the program say it's something that's needed now more than ever. I feel that in this time, especially that these services are much needed because uh, it gives people a sense of space to just be them and like really try to figure out who they are again in these certain times. In the past six months, the CARE Zone helped more than 1,300 South San ISD community members. The program will continue over the summer. HEB has updated the purchase limits on meat products as the pandemic continues. Stores in certain regions, including the San Antonio area, are now limiting customers to one brisket per purchase. Customers can still only buy a total of five packages of any combination of fresh beef, ground beef, and fresh ground patties. Chicken, pork, and turkey, though, have been removed from the purchase limit list. Gas prices are ticking up, but not enough to cause any pain at the pump. AAA says the national average for a gallon of regular gas is $1.96. That's about nine cents more than just a week ago, but the association says gas has not been this cheap on Memorial Day weekend in almost 20 years. Well, everybody knows what Google is, or at least how to Google, but not everyone knows how to maximize their searches. So in tonight's Adulting Hacks, RJ Marquez tells us about some helpful tips and tricks to Google like a pro. You probably use Google every day, but did you know the search engine has a bunch of tricks to help you find what you're looking for more efficiently? Here are a few. Use quotation marks to search for an exact word or set of words. This is pretty helpful when you're looking up song lyrics or a phrase or maybe a quote from a book. Use the minus sign before a word that you do not want included in a search. For example, when you search Spurs, you get the information from our team and the soccer club in England. Just put a minus sign before Tottenham and you will only get news from our NBA team. Type the word site and then use a colon to search for something within a specific site. Think of this as a Google search that searches only a particular website. Use two periods between two numbers to search for a range of things. This could be used to search for information or a list about a movie decade, measurements, and prices. If you want the meaning of a word, type define and use a colon. This is basically an online dictionary. Google will even search the web to define slang words or acronyms like LOL. And something fun, you could play the classic Atari game Breakout by searching it on Google. The legendary Brick Breaker game can be found when you search Atari Breakout on Google Images. For The Nine, RJ Marcus. There's no better way to observe Memorial Day than a World War II era flyover, and San Antonio was lucky enough to see one uh, on this Memorial Day. Now, we did have some severe storms last night, but the weather was clear long enough this morning to allow Lewis Air Legends to fly four World War II era planes around San Antonio. This is Military City, the perfect place to do something like this, and a great way to pay tribute to the servicemen and women who gave up their lives for us. Uh, a lot of crowds came out to see these, but the good news is the flyover is available on ksat.com. We had two photographers capturing this flyover, and you can watch it for yourself anytime by going to ksat.com. So check that out if you haven't already. It's a really great way to observe the holiday. Um, 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of severe storms last night in San Antonio, um, and they did cause a lot of damage, but they, it's also an opportunity for a lot of beauty with the thunder and the lightning strikes. And one San Antonio resident uh, took advantage of that opportunity last night. Now, his name is Robert Rubio, and he lives near the Tower of the Americas downtown. Uh, he knew that the weather was coming and decided to get out his camera and was able to capture some really uh, beautiful lightning strikes hitting the Tower of the Americas as the storms rolled through San Antonio. Uh, some incredible video he was kind enough to share it with us. That's something else you can watch on KSAT.com if you haven't already. And as always, send us any of the storm photos and videos you have. Uh, those are something we're always interested in seeing. And uh, I know we have some se more severe weather planned tonight, so keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, lastly, this is a really sweet story coming out of El Paso. Now, Paul Gilbert and Chando just turned one last weekend. Now, this baby you might remember was uh, him and his parents were at the Walmart in El Paso when that massacre happened last August. And his parents both died shielding him and trying to protect him from the shooting. Uh, and they were successful in doing that, but they sacrificed their lives uh, in the process of it, unfortunately. Uh, but something really sweet was to celebrate his first birthday Hundreds of people from the El Paso community came out uh, for a parade for him and uh, it was so sweet to see the community lined up together. Uh, you know, this is something that happened almost a year ago now and to see that the El Paso community hasn't forgotten this young boy and uh, it hasn't, you know, the community hasn't given up on him, uh, made sure they, you know, he knew that they were there for him. Really incredible stuff. We have some great photos of this parade on KSAT.com. That and so much more on our website. Check it out and uh, have a thoughtful Memorial Day. Thanks so much for watching the news at nine. Don't forget to join us for the night beat. Me, Tim, and Adam will be there for you. See you soon.